Does the motion and picture presets change the overall image quality and smoothness on the Samsung Neo QLED QN90A Mini LED TV? Hi friends and welcome to Victor's Reality. Today we'll be taking a look at the QN90A's game mode with Game Motion Plus on, with the Samsung software and hardware with its Motion Accelerator Turbo Plus processing. We'll also be taking a look at motion interpolation and how it works on the QN90A. We'll be comparing the input lag with motion on and off with the QN90A versus Sony's X850C and OLED A90J. And also giving you a rundown on the LG OLEDs C9, C10, C1, and the Sony A90J to show you how they all compare. If you love Samsung TVs or you love smooth motion gaming on your display, Play. This is the video for you. Let's get into it. So friends, this video is to show you what game mode with motion off, motion on, and dynamic mode with game mode off all do and before we begin i'll give you my take and what i've been able to find throughout the whole year using the qn90a now game mode on with motion off gives you the least amount of input lag remember for this video we are talking about 60 hertz gaming we're not going to talk about 4k 120 hertz as that will cut the input lag in half and give you a 5.6 to 5.8 milliseconds at 4K 120 Hz. These numbers here are for 4K 60 Hz, Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 for example. So game mode on with motion off will give you the least amount of input lag with the least amount of picture processing. With motion on, you can see here from 9.8 we jump to 20.8 and it gives you some increased smooth motion. That's why you see the delay in the input lag. But it's the best in the business and I'll show you that in a bit. But as we go to dynamic preset with game mode off, as you cannot have game mode with dynamic preset, 76.6 milliseconds. This is with game mode off, but smooth motion on dynamic preset. The picture is elevated to the next level deeper colors, more saturated areas. Everything looks beautiful and amazing. And it shows the full power of this QN90A mini LED TV. But of course, with the increased input lag, because it has to process the picture and give you that amazing image. And again, giving you my opinion, as many out there state that game motion may not be working on their TVs. It doesn't work at 30 frames per second. It doesn't work at 60 frames per second. The smooth motion has artifacts. All those negative and incorrect sayings on this picture option is what it is incorrect here i have it full motion and in slow motion so you can see for yourself there is no artifacting not to the point that other people are complaining about if you see it now i'm not going to tell you this is a hundred percent stutter free artifact free image but i can tell you 70 to 80 percent it is a super smooth clear image and you can see it clearly here in this video samsung tvs have gotten better along the years and this is the best TV with the best software and hardware combination. So if you got the QN90A or Samsung equivalent, just know you have the best smooth motion gaming TV on the planet today. And in this whole video, the game motion on with game mode on, you will be able to see and tell the difference as that will have the game bar menu on in every single video or every single screen. And you can also tell the dynamic preset among the others because the dynamic preset has a deeper black dynamic contrasty image versus the game modes which again are subdued and the color is less because there's less picture processing so you can easily tell in case i didn't write it down which i did you will be able to visually see it so what we're trying to see now is the smoothness of the overall picture again youtube caps this whole image at 60 frames per second you can't really see game motion with its soap opera effect motion or game mode with its subdued increased interpolation of the 60 hertz image because youtube is at 60 frames per second you won't be able to see above that i can only do my best to show you the differences to help you make an awesome buying decision now these types of videos are really fun to make and really awesome as i want to show you the differences so you can make again that awesome buying decision and you can experience the best gaming for your corresponding game genre especially first-person shooters and racing games shine with this motion accelerator turbo plus processing and as i talked in the video you'll be able to see in the images yourself i did try to copy in my editing to give you the most difference in input lag as i've cut this video into different parts and some of them have that delay with the dynamic preset of 76.6 versus 20 versus 9 and some are just even full force 
no delay because I want to show you the differences on smoothness. So again, this is my first video trying to capture the Motion Plus. As we go on, I will make other videos, especially with Forza, which even has a more drastic change than what you're going to see today. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I will get to it as soon as possible. So again, what does Game Mode Game Motion Plus do? Again, everyone is different everyone might want to have it at a different level. I need smooth motion as it gets me the best and clearest way to a 4K 120Hz motion. And to get the most out of your Game Motion Plus, set it at 10 judder and 10 blur reduction to get the most out of the Game Motion Plus. At those settings, you will see a difference. If you have it anything other than that, it's going to be really hard to tell. But that's why this video is here to show you the differences. You can see right here, what Game Motion Plus does is the QN90A supports low latency motion interpolation, great for improving motion on low frame rate games, anything under 120 hertz. Okay guys, that's what I'm trying to tell you. 4K 120 hertz is native. That is the best you can get on TVs. That's what's that's the whole point of the HDMI 2.1. When 4K 120 hertz is enabled or VRR, you cannot use Game Motion Plus because that's what it's trying to achieve. It's trying to achieve the faster frame rates from 30 to 60, 60 to 120, all through software hardware. But native 4K 120 does not need Motion Plus on because it's native. That's the best you can get. But you know, not every game, very, very few games out there support 4K 120 hertz. Even the newest Halo Infinite, which this is the trailer, does not support native 4K 120 hertz. Take a look at the Digital Foundry video. They say it's at 1440p trying to hit 120 hertz, but it hovers between 100 and 110. No console right now can handle native 4K 120 hertz, meaning the 4K resolution, which they always dumb it down to 1080p or 1440p and 120 hertz. Usually no game can run it. Digital Foundry has a video on this, so check that out so you can see what I'm talking about. But the good thing is we're getting up there and soon the next generation consoles, yeah, PlayStation 6 and Xbox Series Z, whatever you want to call it, will be able to handle native 4K 120 hertz, then you won't need Game Motion Plus because that's the best you can get. That's what Game Motion Plus is trying to achieve. But for any console, current or prior, this Game Motion Plus elevates your gaming to the next level with low latency motion interpolation. Again, great for improving motion on low frame rate games. You can see right here the QN90A with 4K 60 with game motion is at 20.8 milliseconds outside of game mode, which would be dynamic mode, which would be 76.6 milliseconds. Again, these are both at 4K. And you can see right here, 4K at 120 hertz natively is what game motion plus is trying to do. 5.3 milliseconds. That's amazing. That's awesome because this is a native 4K 120 hertz panel. Again, this is what input lag is. Every time you press a button is what you would see a reaction on the screen. With Game Motion Plus on, with the smooth motion on, you want the fastest input lag so you know that you're feeling when you hit a punch, you can instantly see the reaction of what you're pressing. And especially with this Motion Accelerator Turbo Plus processor, it makes your 4K 60 look 4K 120-ish. Remember, this is all software, hardware-based, not native, like natural 4K 120 hertz signal would provide. Now, taking a look here at the QN90A versus the Sony's X850C, which is what I have at 55 and 65 inches, and the newest best OLED of Sony, which is the A90J. The A80J being similar to what you're gonna see here, so I just decided to provide the A90J numbers. I have the X850C from Sony. I got them a couple of years ago, you can see in 2016. I believed back then these were the best 4K TVs at that time, according to me. Now, I didn't spend drastically on a $3,000 TV. This was about $1,500 to $2,000, still expensive back then, as the TVs are right now anyway. Ratings.com has changed their settings and their review data, and you can see here 65 milliseconds at 1080p with interpolation, but they did remove the 4K interpolation at 60 hertz, which was about 84 milliseconds. I don't know why they removed it from the data now, but I'm just telling you that's what I've been gaming on as I need smooth motion on. I also have the Samsung, the H7150, which was a 1080p equivalent to the Sony and the motion back then. Samsung did not have a good motion processor compared to the Sony, and that's why I'm showing you these numbers quick note I remember buying my TV at Best Buy and I told one of the Magnolia people or one of the Best Buy TV people and they were trying to push a different brand I forgot which one it was but I told them nope the X850C from Sony is the best for smooth motion gaming 
And that's how actually they found out about Ratings.com as Ratings.com was not as known back then as it is now. And he saw the numbers and he couldn't say anything. And again, I went and I bought the 55 and 65 inch X850C, beautiful picture and smooth motion gaming at 4K, 80 to 84 milliseconds, like I said, it was doable for me at that time because I needed smooth motion gaming. I also have a Sharp LE650 and 750 and the input lag on those were 125 milliseconds totally unplayable i could not play my forza on those tvs meaning i did because i wanted to play a game but with smooth motion on it was unplayable and when i went to the x850c to me 80 to 84 milliseconds jumping to 120 plus was a drastic difference that's why i kept the x850c and was able to see how an improved TV or processor can make a world of a difference with smooth motion gaming. And the reason why I'm telling you this story is anything above 80 milliseconds, I would say, would now would be the borderline. Anything above 100 is totally unplayable. I don't care what anyone says. If they say it is, they're lying, they're misinformed, they don't know what they're talking about. That's why if you look at the A90J, 4K 60 hertz with interpolation at 143.7 milliseconds, it's disgusting. Sorry if you have that TV and, and I'm telling you what, and I'm giving you my opinion on that disgusting name. It's just 100% truth. It is totally unplayable. If you have the A80J, A90J, and I'm coming in peace talking to you as a friend to get you informed on these TVs. Doesn't matter to me what you buy. I'm trying to help you make an awesome buying decision. But if you prefer an OLED, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and have an awesome fun time on your TV. Your eyes rule, your eyes are the best in deciding what you want and what you need. But facts are facts. If you have a Sony OLED right now, go ahead and, and turn on Cinemotion with the smoothest gaming, with, with the smooth preset. It's totally unplayable. You don't need anyone to tell you it is or it isn't. Go ahead and see for yourself. And when you do that, leave a comment down below and say, Victor, uh-huh, I know what you're talking about. You don't have to say I'm right. Just leave a comment down below so you can see because it's totally disgusting. And that's not the OLED technology's fault because OLED is the fastest pixel light on off panel on the market today. It beats mini LED, it beats LCD. That's not the issue, that's not the question. We're talking about the processor inside these TVs when enabling smooth motion. And the Sony A90J is disgusting and bad and you cannot play 4K 60 Hertz with interpolation with smooth motion on those TVs. Facts are facts and that's what I'm providing here. But I am telling you I have the X850C and I know what 80 to 120 milliseconds looks like what it feels like and then when you jump to the qn90a and you see 20.8 milliseconds oh my gosh it's a revelation it is amazing and you need to experience it and you won't know until you actually have it in your face seeing the differences i know not everyone can buy every single tv and I, it's disgusting for people to buy tvs and return tvs like a lot of youtubers are doing i think it's really trashy that they're hurting the industry by buying these TVs and then they make their videos and then they return it, it's disgusting, it's low life. I don't enjoy channels like that. Do your research before you end up giving false information just to prove or try to push a certain technology. Opinion is opinion, but I don't see no OLED pusher pushing these numbers because they can't win. Numbers are numbers, facts are facts, numbers don't lie. But again, friends, I come in peace and I'm just giving you the information. And if you like these kinds of videos, not necessarily pushing mini LED, I'm pushing processing technology and Samsung has the best in the business. Next year I will be getting the LG C2 OLEDs to be able to do these comparisons for you so you can see the differences. As I believe OLED next year will be the year I will jump into that TV monitor market. I will be getting the 42 inch and 55 inch to compare them to my TVs and monitors to help you make an awesome buying decision. The Aorus FV43U versus the LG C2 is going to be amazing and I know you guys can't wait to see those kinds of videos. But again here showing the QN90A destroys everybody on smooth motion gaming with 4K 60Hz interpolation. Now again friends I apologize if I'm excited when I explain these things to you but this is just common sense to me. This is all stuff that is widely known, yet no one talks about it because they're hiding the facts. They're trying to push the OLED agenda or whatever agenda you want to call it. I don't speak to a crowd of people and try to convince them. I'm trying to give you the information so you can make up your mind. If you want to ignore facts, go right ahead. That's your business. But facts are facts and it's undeniable when you see it in motion.